Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, has urged the federal government to reverse the 6% tenancy and lease stamp duty agreement in the country. Ayuba Waba, the NLC president, said that the Congress noted with dismay the new policy by the federal government through the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, stipulating a 6% stamp duty fee for every tenancy and lease agreement in Nigeria. The Congress demanded the agreement as condemned rather the agreement as the new policy came at a time when the socio-economic pressure arising from COVID-19 dislocations was affecting many Nigerians. We have economist Bolaho Olujade and Michael Famaruti, Star's chief executive data analyst, join us uh, on the news to discuss this. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. I'll start yeah, with you. you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, Mr. Olojade, uh, typically we are told that Nigerians aren't paying enough tax, but one of those who ask, what is being done with a tax that has been paid? Uh, that's, that's where the problem is. Um, it's a serious trust deficit. You know, there's this unwritten code between the government and the taxpayers as far as taxes is concerned. And that code is, I pay you my taxes and you use it to make life better for me. So the roads, the schools, the healthcare, you help me provide all of that, make it easy for me. But in Nigeria, that is not what we have seen. So all the time when people say, when government says, oh, we're not paying enough taxes. Yeah, that is true, we're not paying enough taxes. But then, the little we have paid, what have you done with it? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very valid uh, uh, question to ask. It's not just about saying, okay, the, the tax to GDP ratio is so low. Yes, it is so low. Even, even within Africa, uh, Nigeria's tax to GDP ratio is extremely low. You know, But you need to build trust with the people for you to be able to get higher revenue from taxes. And government has not done enough in that space. We, we see how taxes have been spent. We've, we've, in the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about NDDC and, and all those other stories. Those are taxes, you know, gathered in Abuja and shared out to agencies of government. That is how those money have been spent. So how do you, how do you get more? Some have, so, some have actually... Under those kind of Yes, some have actually questioned whether we do not pay and um, end up paying a lot of tax uh, by uh, still, to, since we end up subsidizing, uh, since we end up subsidizing services that should have been provided for by the government. To, to a very large extent, that is true. Uh, when you think about the fact that we all pay more than reasonable to provide security for ourselves. We all send children to private school when they will have gone to public school. We have a lot to contribute to our own health care because the structures are not there. So in a way, it might be said that we're already spending a, a, a disproportionate portion of our income uh, on things that governments will have taken off from us. And therefore, we don't have to pay more taxes. But don't forget that Africa, let's just take Africa as for comparison, Africa's problem is literally the same across countries. When you move from here to Ghana to Benin to Mali, you see all those problems are the same. So even when you go into those other African countries, the problems of uh, schooling, of healthcare, of uh, infrastructure are still the same, but they are still paying more taxes in those African countries than we are in Nigeria. All right. I don't think Nigerians are really averse to a structured tax system, I think they just need to be reassured that there is a benefit to what they are paying. And, and that, is, that is the gap that I see. Okay, uh, I'm told we now have uh, Mr. Michael Famaroti join us. I'll just put you quickly on the spot. For those of us that don't really understand uh, the difference, could you clarify what the difference is between uh, value-added tax that's um, um, VAT and stamp duty. Hi, um, yes. Yeah, so I think um, the core thing to understand is um, both of them are legally mandated taxes. Um, so both of them have specific acts that, that essentially lay out what goods and services are chargeable um, for both 
VAT and stamp duty. Um, so there is a VAT Act, VAT Act, which obviously was revised recently as part of the finance bill. Um, and then there's, of course, also the stamp stamp duty act um, essentially they're similar in the way they operate um the key difference is that stamp duties tend to be a, a much narrower set of taxes um that are defined by the schedule that is listed in the stamp duty act um you you would usually see stamp duties on uh, property some financial transactions and so on whereas VAT is usually applicable on all goods and services apart from certain necessities that are listed in the exclusion section of the documents. Uh, should we be concerned or should we be worried really um, the fact that it's now being used as some sort of cash cow uh, by the federal government? Because if you see the, the disparity in the figures, about two billion naira jump. Well, so, I mean, there's a balance to be struck here, right? Because we often speak about Nigeria's normal revenue problem. Uh, the reality is that apart from customs, um, which is another you know, issue on its own, and independent revenues from the departments and agencies, taxes are the best bet in terms of trying to increase normal revenues. Um, at the same time, I definitely agree with my colleague on the call that... Um, you can't increase taxes in isolation, right? Um, and as you build, as you, as you increase taxes, you need to recognize that they are a social tool as well as a policy tool, right? And it's very important that you build trust and confidence in the populace, um, else it begins to look as if you are trying to squeeze out as much money from them as possible. There's right. no country in the world where people like paying taxes, but people pay taxes because they believe they're going to get something in return. Um, Nigerians generally feel that they don't get things in return. Um, and instead, the more taxes that they pay, the more they tend to suffer. Right. So you look at the logistics sector and the furor that has come out from there over the last few days and you understand where the annoyance comes from right so we need to do a lot of work right it's not just in terms of finding the taxes that would generate the mm, most revenues but finding the taxes that people are most comfortable with and have faith in terms of its ability to generate good public goods and services for them in the long run because as soon as that happens people will be more willing to pay taxes. In All right, let, let's go back to uh, Mr. Olojade. Uh, is the problem not also with a lack of a centralized and even automated tax collection system? Uh, well, it's, it's part of the problems. Um, you, you also have states like Lagos, uh, which is ahead of its spirit. Um, in Lagos states today, you can get on your computer and do your file and do your tax returns. Um, which is a step in the right direction. But beyond um, being able to do your tax return, is the fact that we have problems with data. Um, I'm glad that the Finance Act of 2020 is trying to address part of that. Problem is, if a lot of people are not in that tax net, how much can you really collect? And the people that are in the tax net, quite a number of them are also not still paying. So. The data is a major problem. Let's be able to put as many people. How can people have account uh, details? They have companies, they are running companies, but they don't have tax numbers. How? Which country who does that? So I agree with that postulation that we need to do more in terms of automation uh, to make things easier for people in terms of collection. Or if, if I want to pay, I want to be make it. I want it to be easier for me to pay. At the same time, we need to know that automation on its own is not enough. The taxpayers must have at least a bit of disposition towards paying the tax. Otherwise, um, automation will still not be able to get the right level of compliance from the people. We need more than just automation. Automation is important, but it's not enough. It's not enough.
It, it's certainly not enough. How can a more transparent system be established such that citizens can see the direct connection between the taxes being paid and the employment of those same taxes? It's, it's, uh, I, I put it down to accountability, number one. Um, people want to want you to be accountable for those money. So governments are going to have to be more transparent. When there is budget, let people be able to see it. When you are doing things, people will start to see it. If I have a big pot hole in front of my home and I see local government come around to fix it, I know they are doing something. If I had no water before, and suddenly water is running in my table. I can see it, I can feel it, I can be part of it. Once you start to get more accountable, more transparent to the people, then they start, you start to earn their uh, confidence all over again. We also need to get the rich to pay. Uh, my favorite example is a case of one of the uh, uh, presidential aspirants in, in the last election, who was governor for eight years. And he said that the total taxes he paid over a three-year period was about, I think, 5.2 million naira. That is ridiculous. That is not real. So even for the public officers, we need, they need to show us that they are paying the taxes. Everybody that wants to contest as president, as governor, let us know how much they have paid over the last three years in taxes. In this, in this and that will begin to get people more confident into that space. They want to All see right. what you are doing with their taxes. They want accountability and information, publish things, show things. And they also want the big people. They want to see that the big people are also paid. Let's all do right. all those things and we'll begin, we just begin the journey to transparency. All right. Uh, in conclusion, uh, Mr. Fa uh, Famoroti, uh, are there plans to formally coordinate taxes, do you know, via a centralized system like the BVN, such that um, individuals are taxed holistically and in a one-stop shop kind of way. Yeah, I think the reality is um, we're still quite a while away from that system, right? Um, even just for the simple fact that you look at our tax structure, um, there's a lot of confusion in terms of who taxes what, um, and a lot of it doesn't make sense, right? Um, so for me, um, I look at corporation tax, and that is done at a federal level. And it means that as a governor, I have no, in I have little incentive to attract a big corporate to my state, right? Uh, look at how it's done in Europe, where you see cities in the world competing for Google to set up its headquarters there, because they understand the tax benefits that that's that they can get. Um, Nigeria is still far from that um, because there, the incentives between the tax collector and the people paying taxes aren't aligned. Um, and there is even no incentive for the different tiers of government to share data properly, right? Um, so by the time you compare personal taxes with corporate taxes, then, then you can even learn a lot more about how many people are paying taxes and why, but that data isn't shared, right? So before we get to a place of, you know, centralizing everything, um, we need to make sure that um, we rationalize the way different tiers of government collect taxes. Um, All right. And in my view, even looking to who collects what, because that's something that um, right now, in my view, doesn't actually quite make sense. And All right. the best way forward. Gentlemen, Mr. Olojade and Mr. Famoroti, thank you very much for your time with us on the news this morning. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Thank you.